Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 13. Hi, my name is Michaelia, and I would like to invite you to plug in and get connected to Yes, Youth Empowerment Session. Someone is lost, stuck in the dirt, buried alive. Buried alive. Maybe someone who read the dream is living a lie. Hallelujah. This is for them, every good alienated by die. Come on. Remember the pain, all the sorrow, all the fights. Yes, sir. Too many times, too many trials, too many days, too many nights. Person who's working, working their hardest. Under less diamond, feeling impartial. Nothing can stop you. 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 Good morning, church. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting us into your homes one more time. Today is Valentine's Day. Today is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to all of the ladies. Happy birthday to anyone who's celebrating a birthday today. I know there are a number of, our, number of our members who have birthdays in the month of February. So happy birthday to all. Last week I announced that our, our church will be observing our Women's Day again this year. The fourth Sunday um, in June. And it is my prayer that we will begin to worship together in the church and everything will remain the same. For this year, things will remain the same as last year as far as the programs and anniversaries are concerned. And those who are in positions, I'm asking you to stay in the same position for 2021. This year, 2021, uh, we may have to look at our calendar and, and certainly look at choosing a woman of the year because our women have been working since January. And so uh, we hopefully will be able to select a woman of the year. Also, we will have a visiting preacher. And so um, once we get back to normal, we will 
have everything according to how we are used to having it each Sunday. Again, I'm asking each family for $100 for our Women's Day effort. And you don't have to wait until Women's Day to give that. You can do it as I do every month, every week. I give a little something in my envelope every week toward our Women's Day effort. Speaking of our envelopes, I hope, I pray that all of our members have their envelopes by now. If you do not have your envelope, contact your deacon. If you do not have your box of envelopes, contact your deacons. If you do not know who your deacon is, call the church. Uh, every day, every day, every day, someone stops by. So um, please drop by and, and uh, leave messages for us in our box. And also leave your envelope in our box, mailbox, and we'll be glad to be in touch with you. I want you to know our church is doing very well. Our church, is doing, our church is doing very well. Our church is still being maintained. Our church is doing as being, being maintained. And our food pantry is growing. Our food pantry is not only growing, but Brother Butler is still talking. Praise the Lord. I want to thank, sincerely, sincerely thank the chairman of our trustee ministry, Trustee Willie Wright, and all of the other trustees for how they have maintained our church. Our church looks beautiful on the outside and on the inside. Grass has been cut, snow has been removed, and the church is kept in excellent order. So may God continue to bless all of our trustees and how they have been maintaining our church. Our prayers go out to Sister Reddick. Our prayers go out to Sister Reddick in the passing of her, a member of her family. I understand that Deacon Daniel has already spoken with her. Uh, she's, tra she's traveling to Virginia, and our prayers are with her, praying that she will not only get there safely, but arrive back here safely. I thank God for all of our tr teachers. I thank God for all of our teachers, every one of them. They are doing a magnificent job of teaching, uh, showing up on time, teaching well, and the classes are growing. The classes are growing. We have people who are tuning in who are not members of the church, but they're tuning in and uh, they come from different parts of the country. And so I thank God for our teachers. I understand that uh, we are having our preachers to teach, and Reverend Campbell is going to be teaching, as Brother, uh, Brother Campbell is teaching, and other t preachers are teaching. I'm looking forward to hearing each one of them. Last but not least, the pandemic is still with us. The pandemic is still with us. Please get your shots. Please get your shots. Sign up. Get your shots. And when you uh, do, um, stay safe. Even after you get your shots, you have to continue to wear your mask, uh, keep your distance, wash your hands, and um, be safe. Be safe. Everybody around you is not safe. Be safe. Don't, don't play like this thing is over. It will be over soon and very soon, but in the meantime, I want you to take care of yourself. We're looking forward to your being here in the church where we can worship together soon and very soon. Again, and last but not least, I want to thank Brother Barry Hutchins for how he has been so 
faithful and making sure that this happens because of him, this happens. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Brother Barry, for all of your um, expertise. And I don't take that lightly. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. This morning, scripture will become from the book of St. John's, a familiar scripture, chapter 3, verse 16. It reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, everlasting life. Now let's pray. Most gracious and heavenly fathers, once again, we, your humble servants, come, Lord. We come in the name of Jesus Christ. We come, Lord, just being as humble as we possibly can, Lord. We just ask that your spirit of you dwell within this place, Lord. As the pastor brings the word for us, Lord, we pray that the word will fall on fertile ground, Lord. So on this fertile ground, Lord, people will understand that you are the one and only true living God. We just ask you could continue watching over those who might be sick and shut in, Lord. We ask that you continue watching over the one who's going to bring the word today, Lord. We pray that, Lord, that he hide behind the word and bring forth what you have asked him to bring forth, Lord. We just ask you continue watching over the leadership of this church as they have to make decisions sooner or later when they... When they when that you're going to tell them to open it up, Lord. We just pray, Lord, things are done in decency and order. We just ask you continue watching over me and my family, Lord, and all those who are under the sound of my voice. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Uh, I heard reading of the word from our deacon for the day, Deacon Palmer. Deacon Palmer, I've uh, been knowing him for a long time. Uh, thank God for him. I knew his father, John Palmer. Yeah, John Palmer was somebody's and did not mess around. Amen. So thank God for Deacon Palmer. Palmer. Thank you, sir, for reading John 3, 16. That's our text for the day. I like to use for a subject an expression of love. An expression of love. John 3, 16 is one of the most repeated Verses in the Bible. John 3, 16. One of the most repeated verses in the Bible. Methodist, Catholic, Baptist, all repeat John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that Whoever, and that's the part of that scripture that I love. I love that part because it says whoever. Whoever means you and me. Whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God, God so loved the world. I love that passage of scripture. Putting it simple means that God loves everybody. Uh, I know we try to separate people by the way they look, by the color of their skin, by the way they talk, by where they live, by how they smell, by how much they make. But this passage of scripture says that God loves everybody. And everybody means everybody. So I thank God for that passage of scripture. God so loved the world. It does not matter what church you belong to, what organizations you belong to, God loves you. And I'm so glad about that today. John 3, 16, 
on this Valentine's Day tells me that God loves me and God loves you. John 3.16 is, is an expression of love. Nobody loves like God. Nobody. I don't care who that person, that person's, I don't care who they are. Nobody, nobody loves you like God loves you. Some people can tell you they love you, but when they get mad with you, they forget all about you and move you to the side. But God loves you no matter how you treat him. God loves you, everybody. Uh, just think about that. Just think about that. He loved the world so much uh, that he gave his only son. There's nothing in the scripture said that says that there was another son somewhere lurking in, in the back. It says God loved his love, gave his only son uh, so much that he gave him to the world. I like that passage of scripture also for this Valentine's Day because some people won't receive cards. Some people won't receive letters. Some people won't receive uh, any kind of, of boxes of candy. But just knowing that God loves you, that's, that's enough for me. On Valentine's Day, some po folk will get boxes of candy. <coughs> candy, excuse me. Some people will get boxes of candy. Some people will get a cake. A friend of mine uh, on Valentine's Day, he will get a pineapple cake baked for him by his wife um, to show her love. The Valentine's cake is an expression of love. The box of candies is a, an expression of love. The card that you receive is an expression of love. So with Valentine's Day, we do that to show an expression of love. But let me, let me stick a pin in that right now because really and truly every day should be Valentine's Day. Show your love for your loved one every day. I looked at this passage of scripture and it stuck out so clearly to me because there are little things that you can do to show your love for your loved one. Every now and then, I know that Sister Graham loves me. I know she loves me. And the reason why I know is because when I go home, I open the door and I smell, mmm, I smell an apple pie cooking. Lord have mercy. Sister Graham can bake an apple pie. Don't you stop here, it's my house now. But Sister Graham can cook an apple pie. And you know what her apple pies taste like? More. So I thank God for her showing her expression of love. There are many ways many ways that we show our expressions for love. John 3.16 tells us that God uh, so loved the world that he gave his son. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Uh, I, I, I looked at that thing. In other words, he gave you the best he had. Thank God for that. When you say you love somebody, give them the best you have. Don't give them the second best. Don't give them the leftovers. Give them the best you have. God so loved the world. Oh, I thank God because God gave me his son. Uh, I didn't have to do that. He, Lord have mercy. He didn't have to do that, but, but God gave me his son. Even though I act like I'm crazy 
sometime. God still gave them to me because he, he loved me. Now, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Now, my question to you is, could you make a, a, a get a, a better, more loving, love than that that God gave you? There is something called, there is something called tough love. Have you ever heard of that? Tough love. Uh, there is really something called tough love. Tough love is when you do something that may seem like it'll be hurting, but they, they do that because they love you. Can I give you an example? A very good friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, his son, teenager, uh, took something in school that didn't belong to him. Uh, I want you to know that this brother's little boy's son, my father, was a Christian. Uh, went to church every Sunday. Parents took them every Sunday, taught him how to do the right thing. But he took something in school that he should not have taken. And he got caught. And when he got caught, they took him, they called the police. And when they called the police, the police took him downtown to the jail and called his daddy and said, is this your boy? The father said, yes, he belongs to me. He said, well, he just took something that didn't belong to him. Father looked at the little boy. He said, did you take that? The little boy said, yes. He said, well, put him in the jail. The police said, what? He said, put him in the jail. And he turned around and started to walk away. And the boy said, Dad! Dad! Tough love. Dad told that little boy he better not ever take anything that doesn't belong to him again. So sometimes you have to show tough love. Needless to say, the boy never stole anything again. Lord have mercy. There is something called tough love. But the love that God has for us is the love that cannot be understood by most people. Now, the reason why I say that is because God loves some people we wouldn't dare love. Uh, God loves some people we would never, ever think about loving. But that's why he's God. He's God all by himself. There are times when I go to the church and I see our members who are there with all kinds of problems and, and I let them know that I love you. I, I, I love every member of the church because I'm their pastor. And I care about them. I care about them, and God cares about them. Loving somebody means that you will provide for them. Loving somebody means that you will care for them. Loving somebody means that summer, winter, spring, or fall, that you will never stop loving them. That's why when a couple takes their marriage vows, 
in the marriage vows it says in sickness and in death. Love, love your loved one no matter how condition they are in. An expression of love is, is, is showing that person that they mean so much to you that you're doing something special just for them. Oh, and by the way, when you buy your cards, uh, be sure that you look at the words in the card. Make sure that they're words that will come from your heart. Because what you're doing is showing an expression of love. Let them know that these are just, just, not just words, but they're words <laughs> They're, they're, they're your expression. It's how you feel. It comes from the heart. Uh, I thank God for the fact that I have on many occasions had to show my expression of love for my girls, Sheree and Kia. Sometimes Kia would drive me crazy. I have to remember that I love her. An expression of love has to be shown no matter how young or how old the person is. So now, now I want you to understand something here today. Your expression of love has to come from the heart. It's not from the tongue, not from the mind, it's from the heart. Your expression of love cannot be given in a way that you cannot feel that expression. Oh, so many times, so many times, we have people who never get loved. There's so many times people never feel loved. But I'm so glad today that I know God loves me and God loves you. I'm so happy today to know that this church First Missionary Baptist Church, the church of love. We show love. The pantry people out there giving food away, showing love. Trustees out there distributing food, showing love. I'm so glad that our deacons are available Pray for people, showing that they're not forgotten. When this pandemic is over, we'll be able to get back into the hospitals to hold the hand of a loved one or member of the church to show love. Love is an expression that everybody needs. I don't know anybody who does not need to be loved. There are times in your life and in my life that we don't feel love. I've been there. Uh, on certain occasions, something has happened where I don't feel love. But it's on, at that time and on those occasions that I know, maybe that person does not feel it, but there is somebody that does. Can I go to Calvary now? Can I go to Calvary? I want to talk about an expression of love. 
And Reverend Campbell, you cannot find an expression of love more so than on Calvary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son on Calvary. Uh, on Calvary, he hung there, stretched between two thieves. He was dying on Calvary. No question about it. He was dying on Calvary. A thief on this side, a thief on the other side. But he showed an expression of love. How do I know? Because the Bible tells me that this brother on one side, who was a thief, looked at Jesus and said to him, remember me when you get into your kingdom. Jesus looked at him and stopped dying long enough to say, today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Expression of love. So I thank God for Jesus. I thank God because he sent Jesus to love me. And on this Valentine's Day, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Especially during these times of, of discord. During this time of fussing, fighting. Love your neighbor. During this time when Hurt people, hurt people. Love your neighbor as yourself. I got to let my tent down now and get out of here. But before I go, I want you to know that God has a way of showing you how much he loves you. I never have to worry about how I'm going to get here because God provides transportation for me every Friday. I don't have to pay for it. I haven't paid for it yet. I don't have to, to bargain for it. Every Friday, God loved me so much he provided transportation for me. And not only did he invite con, uh, uh, transportation for me, but when I get here at the church, he gave me enough patience. When Barry doesn't show up on time, he gives me enough patience to, to show my love for him. Uh, yeah, showing him an expression of, of love. So, so I say to you, and to you, and to you, and to you, and to you, show somebody some love. I don't care who it is, show some love. And someday, some way, somebody will show you some love. Uh, and, and remember, remember, God loved you, so why not show somebody else some love? The last thing I want to say is this. God so loved the world that he gave his son out of his love. So why can't you show some love? Impossible when we believe and all chains are breakable when we receive the way. My sisters and my brothers, I believe in my heart 
that everybody should be saved. God has sent us a savior. His name is Jesus. I'm offering him to you. If there's anyone out there who has never accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, you can do it right now. Just hold your hand up and tell God that you you want to offer him your life. Say, here I am, Lord. Take my life. You gave me your son. I'm giving you my life. Tell God you accept his son as your personal savior. And you are saved. Also, soon and very soon, as soon as church is open again, run to somebody's church. Run right down the aisle when the pastor, preacher opens the door to the church, extends the invitation. Run down the aisle and tell them that Reverend Graham told me to come down here and join the church. Join somebody's church and be a servant to the Most High God. And when you do, you'll never be sorry and you'll never be the same again. Let the church say amen. You keep your promises. Let us pray. Now, Father, now, God, we thank you for this mountaintop experience. Here we are, one more time, able to come and say a word for the Lord. We were able to say how much we love God, but God loved us first. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for blessing us over and over and over again. But now that we have come to worship, we need to serve. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice that we might be the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that you have us to be. Love us, bless us, keep us, and use us in your service. Now may the grace, the love, the peace, and the joy of our Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. May it rest, rule, and abide with each of us. Now and henceforth and forevermore. And those who love the Lord said, Amen. Yeah.